What do the US, China, Russia, the UK, France, and Sweden have in common? You can't guess? The fact that these countries are capable of building modern supersonic fighters. But it seems that one more country has appeared in this elite row, South Korea, which made a real sensation with its KF-21 Boramae aircraft, which translates from Korean as Young Hawk. And it's even more surprising as this country has practically no aviation history. Before the KF-21, South Korea boasted the KT-1 Wung B subsonic single-engine turboprop trainer and the T-50 two-seat supersonic combat trainer. And then bang! A Generation 4++ multi-role fighter took to the skies? In this video, we'll talk about this airplane and reflect on its future. Watch till the end, it'll be interesting. The first place to start is the background. Nothing is created when there's no need, so let's take a look at the current makeup of South Korea's Air Force. They're quite numerous, but many of the aircraft are already obsolete. Specifically, these are the F-4 Phantom IIs that the Americans fought the Russians on back in the Vietnam War. South Korea has 19 of them. Plus the F-5 Tiger II, of which there are 156, there are also 167 multi-role KF-16s, a licensed version of the F-16, and 59 F-15Ks, a licensed version of the F-15E. There are also 60 already mentioned T-50 and 20 pieces of turboprop KT Wung B. As you can see, only the F-16 meets more or less modern realities in South Korea, and even then with a very big stretch. With Kim Jong-un's North Korea, with Ping and Putin looking out from behind him, this is very little. This problem is what leads us to the reasons for the creation of the KF-21. In 2001, the project of this airplane was first announced. It was done by the president of South Korea himself, Kim D. Cheon. He presented it as KF-X, which later crystallized into KF-X and then into KF-21. The development of the new aircraft is the responsibility of the country's leading aircraft manufacturer, Korea Aerospace Industries, abbreviated as KAI and the Defense Development Agency, ADD, Agency for Defense Development of the Ministry of Defense of South Korea. The practical implementation of the new fighter aircraft development program did not begin until 2010. In December 2015, KAI was awarded a contract for the full-scale development of the fighter, known at the time under the designation KF-X. The contract awarded in 2015 called for the construction of six prototype flight prototypes and two ground test models. It's since 2015 work on the new fighter has reached the highest degree of productivity. It's important to realize that South Korea is directly supported by the United States in the process of creating its own multi-role fighter. Lockheed Martin, a leading U.S. aircraft manufacturing company, transferred to the Republic of Korea more than 20 technologies that were used in the creation of the F-35A multifunctional fighter bomber of the fifth generation. At the same time, the Korean KF-X fighter with its appearance and aerodynamic model is very similar to another development in the creation of which Lockheed Martin participated, the world's first serial fighter of the fifth generation F-22 Raptor. The Korean fighter stands out with slightly smaller dimensions. At the same time, we're still facing a single-seat twin-engine fighter with a separated double keel and the possibility of locating weapons in the internal compartments of the aircraft. Some of the technologies the U.S. could not transfer to its allies, for example, the transfer of electronic warfare systems, a far radar, and optoelectronic stations was blocked by the U.S. government. Seoul had to develop these technologies on its own, and in this, South Korean engineers succeeded. The final technical appearance of the prospective fighter was approved only in September 2019. After that, the construction process of the head prototype began at the aircraft plant in Station, which was shown to the public on April 9, 2021. The total cost of the entire program was the largest in the history of South Korean military development. The cost of the project to build its own multi-role fighter jet is estimated at 18.6 trillion won. That's about $16.6 .6 billion, of which 8.6 trillion won, or about $7.7 .7 billion, went directly to research and development. The rest of the money is planned to be spent on building production models. On July 19, 2022, the KF-21 made its maiden flight in the presence of President Moon Jae-in 
flying for 33 minutes over Sengshuan Air Base. Tests are scheduled to last until 2028, including launches of domestically produced hypersonic missiles. Now let's take a look at what it is. We've already said that the Koreans position the KF-21 as a 4 plus generation fighter. However, many experts say that thanks to borrowing technologies from the F-35, the KF-21 will have many of the capabilities of 5th generation fighters. So the KF-21 is a single-seat, twin-engine fighter made according to the normal aerodynamic scheme with a high-position trapezoidal wing. At the end of the fuselage, there is a one-piece rotating horizontal plumage and two keels made with a slight outward camber with separating rudders acting as an aerodynamic brake. The two keels are partly used to reduce radar visibility. At the same time, they also increase controllability characteristics, especially in pitch control, by creating torque on the dive. Although there are no full-fledged root swells from the wing to the cockpit on the airplane, vortices still appear. They are created with the help of lateral pointed edges, which also appeared on the F-22 fighter. The cockpit lantern was created by the American company Techstars. A few words about the geometric parameters of the aircraft, weight and speed. Wingspan 11.2 meters or 37 feet, length 16.9 meters or 55 feet, height 4.7 meters or 15 feet. The claimed maximum takeoff weight is 25.4 tons. This is about 10 tons less than the Russian Su-35 and 5 tons less than the F-35A. The maximum airspeed should be Mach 1.9 or about 2300 kilometers an hour. The range is up to 2900 kilometers. More about the engines. On the airplane, as already mentioned, there are two of them. Engine nozzles are round without changing the thrust vector. Therefore, how the Koreans are going to realize the supermaneuverability inherent in the aircraft of Generation 4 Plus is not quite clear. American General Electric F414s with an afterburner are used as fire hearts. They're produced under license in South Korea. The thrust of each engine is 5,900 kilograms, an afterburner 9,900 kilograms. Slightly less thrust is developed by Japanese IHI XF5-1 engines, which are installed on prospective X2 Shinshin fighters. It's lighter than the KF-21, which can be explained by the different tasks for the aircraft, and it has two such engines, enough for a formless supersonic. From this, we can conclude that the KF-21 is a fighter that can fly at cruising no-force supersonic, and this is a very good indicator for the young hawk. Air intakes are the most common for the fifth generation. They're located on the sides of the cockpit, which has a relatively good effect on the effective area of dispersion of the aircraft. Given the location of engines and air intakes on the aircraft, use an S-shaped channel, which also qualitatively affects the reduction of the effective area of dispersion due to the shielding of the first stages of the engine compressor. The aircraft is equipped with a radar station with the FAR and has equipment for electronic warfare. Everything here is at the level of fifth-generation machines. Armament The airplane has 10 suspension points, 6 under the wings, and 4 under the fuselage. To combat enemy aircraft, the fighter will be able to use guided missiles Meteor, Irish T, and AIM-120. The latest version of the American medium-range guided missile AIM-120 can hit targets at a distance of up to 180 kilometers. The Taurus KEPD missile with a declared range of more than 500 kilometers should become the main strike vehicle of the aircraft for actions against ground targets. The maximum payload is 7,700 kilograms. Returning to the topic of internal compartments for weapons, on the accusation of their absence and the resulting increases in the visibility of the aircraft, we can say the following. First of all, also known fifth generation aircraft F-35 can carry missiles on pylons outside the fuselage, although it's not necessary. This is not to mention that the other widely recognized stealth aircraft, the Chinese J-20, has sub-fuselage fins in its airframe design that increase the effective dispersion area. Secondly, what took off on July 19, 2022 was a prototype so that something was tested on it. Good solutions were transferred to the pre-production aircraft and bad ones were eliminated and replaced with alternatives. We should also not forget that the KF-21 will consist of three generations, Block 1, a fighter to gain air superiority, Block 2, a multi-role version, and Block 3, about which little is known yet. And if the first production Hawks will not have internal compartments, they'll be introduced in the second generation. 
because judging by the photos from the assembly shops, there's enough space in the airframe to introduce internal compartments for weapons. So we've looked at the design. Let's conclude to which generation the KF-21 belongs, based on generally recognized criteria. Super maneuverability. No, but it's not on the F-35, the J-31, or so far the J-20. Multi-role capability. Definitely there. A far radar. Yes. Supersonic speed without afterburner? Probably there. Reduced stealth. Simply put, stealth technology? Apparently there is. Can it be stated that the KF-21 is a fifth-generation airplane? In part. It's also impossible to say that the KF-21 is a 4 plus generation fighter, as the Koreans claim. Here, we clearly see the problem of ambiguity of criteria for each generation. The KF-21 is in some ways inferior to some representatives of the fifth-generation aircraft, for example in the absence of internal weapon bays. But in some respects, it's superior to them. For example, in the presence of a formless supersonic. It can also be said that the KF-21 surpasses the aircraft of the 4 plus generation by the presence of stealth technologies and radars with the FAR, but is inferior to them in super maneuverability. Outlook We can definitely say that the KF-21 will enter service in Indonesia. They want 50 aircraft. This country has a lot of Russian aircraft, Su-27SK and Su-27SKM, as well as SU-30MK and SU-30MK2. But in the summer of 2020, American and Indonesian publications wrote that the February 2018 deal between Russia and Indonesia for the delivery of 11 SU-35 fighter jets had collapsed due to pressure from Washington and the threat of U.S. sanctions. Of course, the KF-21 will appear in the South Korean Air Force, they want to produce 100 to 150 airplanes for their needs, replacing, frankly, old stuff like the F-4. It's too early to say about other countries. There's interest from Turkey, but there's no clear information at the moment. I would not like to guess at coffee grounds, but I believe in the sale to the Egyptian Air Force. Cancellation of the Su-35 order, which Russia instead of Egypt is transferring to Iran, will obviously be a reason to start looking for alternatives. A competitor to the KF-21 could be the Chinese FC-31 light multi-role fighter of the fifth generation, also known as the J-31. Both airplanes are designed with a similar expectation in the foreign market to be a cost-effective alternative to the F-35. They may also be joined by the Turkish TFX fighter and the Russian Su-75, which are also trying to supplant the F-35. Not to forget the modern European jets, Saab Gripen, Dassault Rafale, and Eurofighter Typhoon. And that's not to mention the F-35 itself. In general, modern tenders of many countries promise to be very hot. Moving on to the conclusion, the KF-21 is not only at the beginning of its development, and it's already getting a lot of attention. All the more interesting is whether KAI will be able to follow through and create a competitive airplane. There are plenty of precedents when loud and really good projects fail to develop into serious players on the general market, but for some reason it seems that the KF-21 is the airplane capable of becoming a super successful one, even though it'll have a lot of competitors along the way. Write about it in your comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up as your thanks for our labor. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There will be many more interesting videos about modern weapons.